Before we begin, I'm going to ask you now to stand up, please. Now I want you to get into a warrior stance. Don't kick the person in front of you, please. No, no, we're not insured. Otherwise, fine. Okay, get into a warrior stance. There's an imaginary brick in front of you. There's a brick in front of you. Now, this is a metaphor for what could be possibly holding you back in your life to be everything that you could possibly be. Why should there be a brick? The heck with that brick? Let's break it. So we're going to lunge into it, and we're going to say, I'm possible. I'm possible. Again, I'm possible. And again, I'm possible. Yeah, let's sit down. You're great. So we're going to talk to you about our little treasure hunt game that we're doing today. Did you hear about this? Yeah. This is a, a search we're doing. We're hiring a detective agency to find the you in you. Because so much of what we have to offer is hidden within us. And you meet people all the time. They say, you know, I went through my whole life, and I wish I could have done that, and this, and this, and this, and this. And they have this big suitcase full of regret. Well, we have a chance to change that at any point in our life. And through the wonderful sharing that we've had today, we hope that possibly you have been stimulated, maybe even inspired, to make that investment in yourself and take yourself a step further. Because at the end of the day, you're the CEO of yourself. And you have to live with you every day. But wouldn't it be cool if you could live with a better you six months from now? I can't wait to meet him. And what would it be like to be hitting your new goals and new targets and have new skills six months, three years from now? So when we look at ourselves in, in, a, in a, a critical way, very often we're not actually who we see. People see us differently, and we see ourselves differently. And we know this. I mean... You know, before I was a sumo wrestler, um, I look different. Do you look in the mirror today and you go, I'm there, I'm in? How many people have all that you want in life right now? Can you see me just outside? I'm looking for investors. <laughs> Honestly, great deal. I want you to have a look at this slide. By the way, um, this is me. I still haven't figured it out. I love asking the question. What I want to be when I grow up? If you have any ideas today, share them with me. I'd like to know. Now, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Anybody want to be a doctor? Fireman? Nurse? Okay, any women nurses? <laughs> you know, we related to the uniforms. You know, I remember reading about Hillary Clinton, how she had written to NASA when she was an eight-year-old girl, saying, you know, well, I want to be an astronaut. And they wrote back to her, sorry, we're not accepting women. So she goes, okay, I'll just become the Secretary of State and run for president. So what would it be like in your life? And this is the kind of theme that we've been running through with the superhero stuff. And it's really cool to ask the question. What would it be like if you had more? And what would you want more of? I spent some great time as a student. I'm a student of life. There are other here, people here who are teachers. I'm just a student. And I was a student under Deepak Chopra in America. And... Um, one of the most profound things I ever heard was so great, I'm going to give you this today. He said, we are not, people are neither their possessions or their positions. Neither possessions or positions. So then that confuses a lot of people who kind of get stuck on their importance about where they are in life as a business card or what kind of car they're driving. So the question would be, if you want to have more, why? What would it mean to you? So if you had more money right now, how many people would like more money? Uh-huh. What, you mean more money? Great. I was going to say, there's a Durham outside. Somebody dropped it. 
How many people would like to be happier? Uh, does anybody like to lose weight? Or am I the only one in the room? Okay, but why? What would that mean to you? If you can give it a clear meaning that is significant and resonates with you in your heart, then that will drive your passion forward to make you do it. Otherwise, it's just a wish. And my kids make wishes, you know, when they lose their teeth. And the tooth fairy's gonna come and I wish he leaves me a dollar. You've heard a lot about disruption. Industries have been disrupted. I, my, one of my favorite stories, and of course we all know this if we're in the training world, the story of Polaroid and Kodak. These companies were completely disrupted by technologies that they invented. Digital technology was invented, many, many patents by Kodak, and they sat on it because they have a lot of film to sell in the other warehouse. Does anybody want to buy stock today in Kodak? It's a very, very prestigious company, over 100 years old, very famous brand. I think our message today is that there's an opportunity for you to take disruption on an internal journey within you. I heard uh, Ramos today talk about when he was 19. I had no idea he wasn't 19. <laughs> but I remember that as I was coming up through the ladder of my career, someone asked me a question. They said, as you're now 32, yeah, just tell mom I'm not coming home for lunch. <laughs> he said, as you're now 32, would you take the same job you chose when you were 19? Are you in a job right now or career right now because you had to? Stumbled into it? Was it your purpose? Was it your passion? And are you done? I say you're not done. You can start today by asking yourself questions. Is there anything more that I could add to my resume if I could? What would it be? A foreign language? Songwriting? Write a book? Teach? Become a CEO? Become an entrepreneur? Do a startup? I'm possible means no fear. And there is fear. When you say no fear, it's not true. There's fear. The courage is simply that step you take, even though you're afraid and your knees are shaking, you still take a step forward. That's the only difference. And the other people who are afraid, they just kind of stand still, so well, maybe it's not for me. Entrepreneurialism, you know. So I say we have an opportunity to practice this wonderful culture in the business world within ourselves. Here to talk about treasure hunting. There was a farmer in Africa who was so happy, content, and just kind of every day he just joyous. And he met a wise man who came into his village and he showed him around his farm and he told him how much he loved his farm, that his heart was in the ground. That's how much he loved his farm. It was his life. And he was bragging about how the crops grow and how much water he has and his whole family and how he has everything he'd ever want in life. And this man entered his house and he said, but you know, if you could go to some of the other places here in Africa and you found a big nugget of gold, you could buy your whole village. And if you found three or four pieces, you could buy a whole country. And this got the man disturbed, and he was walking and pacing all night. He couldn't sleep. The next day, he freaked out. He went down. He sold his farm. He sent his kids to his sisters. He put the, the mule together with his axe, and he went out looking for gold. And he went relentlessly in every country for months and months and months and spent almost every penny he had. And then they told him, no, actually, they just found some gold in Europe. So he went to Europe. Obviously not Cyprus. <laughs> so he looked everywhere, and finally, at the end, he threw himself off a bridge, and he's dead. However, 
The wise men came back into the village six months later and walked to the house, and there was a new owner of the house, and on the mantelpiece of a house was this beautiful rock. And he goes, where did you get that rock? He goes, oh, I found it in the stream. There's lots of them, but I like this one because when the sun hits it, the light goes everywhere all over the house. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, come on, I'll show you all the rock. There's plenty of them. This is what we have in us. We go out looking for it, but the internal journey and the amazing journey of our life will very often discover layer by layer like an onion. We've got all kinds of stuff within us we have not yet developed. Susan asked you a question this morning, and it was, what would you attempt to do if you knew absolutely without, beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would not fail? How many people would try something new? If you knew you could not fail, what would you try? Anybody have an idea? Movie producer? Flying a plane? Elvis impersonator? Dressed like a gladiator? Oh! You see, the caveat here is if you knew you could not fail, of course you would try. But it's the fear of failure that holds us back. So that's why we break through and we have to continue to break through and continue to break through our comfort zone. That's why we have to know that we are possible, that I'm possible. And if you dare and dare to ask more from yourself, you have a chance to get more, my friends. There are things that you can do tomorrow that you didn't dream of doing 10 years ago that can make you happier. I don't know what that is. It could be eating a Big Mac, a vegetarian dish, seeing a movie, meeting a friend, reading a book, signing up for a course, opening up your own website, coming up with an idea. Push yourself because you've got lots of strength within you. More than you know. And every single one of you deserves, deserves to have more from you. If you'll ask. We all talk about, in the corporate world, branding, 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 branding. Now you have something within you, which are your traits and characteristics. For me, every brand whether it's a luxury brand or any other product or service, we know that when we buy that product or service as a brand, we know it's reliable, it has the integrity, and we know it's pretty much the same. So we can expect that when we buy this, we know what we're getting. What do you have that you could leverage today and begin leveraging that even more to make yourself a brand? Maybe you're the most honest person you've ever met. Maybe you're, you're creative. Maybe you're visual. Maybe you like to draw. Maybe you like anything else that you could now begin to leverage that as a skill set so that when people think about you, they think about that particular trait. We have to know exactly where we stand. And then we might get some opinions from other people. That's fine. Because you have to be coaching yourself. Imagine you hired yourself as a consultant. So, Mike, uh, what do you think? Well, I don't know, Mike, what do you think? If you both agree, fire one of them. <laughs> so, within you lies an incredible amount of treasure. Within you lies the questions that maybe you have yet to ask yourself. And within you, there is so much further ammunition, artillery, and talent that you've yet to develop that if I were you, I would be so darn excited about the future, I couldn't stand myself. Thank you very much.